Hello, and welcome to Tales from the Twists, a podcast where we like to talk about Round the Twist, an 80s, 90s television show from Australia. My name is Joe Lewis, and I'm joined here today by my co-host, Anthony Bull. Hello, Joe. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. You know, just having fun, chilling out, you know. You know, yes. lifting, I'm lifting things. What are you lifting? I don't know, my Weights? voice, because you keep telling me to lift my voice. Well, you, it starts off, we, we spend five minutes... Doing a sound check, yeah, saying ridiculous things in the microphone to make sure that the levels are okay, and then and then I get them all sorted. Then we start the episode, and then you're, oh, you, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm all right, and right. you barely show up. It's okay, it's all right, it's all right. Relax, it's okay, mate. Breathe. But we're here to talk about round the twist, yes. and the episode that we're talking about today is. The second episode of season two, mm-hmm. SO2 EO2, which is called Copycat. Yes. Are you excited to talk about this episode? Yes. Why? It's, because it's, um, I don't know, it's racist, but not, zero. it's too, what? It's racist, but not very racist. How racist? On a scale of one to, uh, like, Ku Klux like, Klan, it's, it's like, how racist are you? I meant to say this. This, this like, episode. this episode was like, okay, so like last season was like, Hmm, that's pretty, there's casual racism there. Hmm, you know. Last week, what was last, casual racism? Last, ra- last, oh, last casual season's casual racism was like, hmm, oh, okay. With the, that's uh. That's alright. Hmm, the Asian businessman and stuff. Yeah. And this time was like, uh, it's, a, it's like, it's like they got notes saying, hey, can, can you tone down the racism? And they're like, oh, okay, we'll tone it down a little. And they toned it down a little. So it was like seeing an improvement, but it was also a little bit racist. And it was like, uh, okay, well, at least they're getting better. That's something positive. There you go. Yeah, like, the mo- but the Mongolians looked pretty good. Like they had the um, they were actual Asian people. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like that. It was like, but it still looked like they were stuck in medieval times. So I was like, mm, okay, whatever. The most racist thing that I can think of in season Ooh. one was the Arabs that were just white people with yeah. rags on their head pretending yep. to be. That's pr- that was pretty racist. But I was saying that uh, one thing I noticed was that yes. they were at a uh, coast coastline or something. Yeah, right? they were at a coastline. Um, and they put their okay. This is in the episode. The Mongolians have a coastline, and they put something in there, and you can describe it to the audience. Yes, but if you look at a map, Mongolia is in, is entirely landlocked. So is it really? Y- well, y- yeah. I mean, look there. Yes. Yep. It's entirely. And he's referring to the map of the world. Which he has in his living room. Framed. 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 A map framed of map of the world. Signed by Vladimir Putin. Yes. Also oh. signed by Tony Abbott. And he had both and of them in the Barack same room Obama. at once. Barack Obama. If only I could. If only. And you were representative of the G20 World Summit. No, but imagine that. Imagine going to them with like a world map, going to the G20 and getting all of them guys to sign it. That'd be... Oh, g- g'day. Hey. My name is Anthony Ball, co-host... Can you, can you sign my map? Co-host Thanks. of the Tales from the Twist podcast. I'd like you to sign my map that I put up in my living room. Well, I could probably get Barack Obama to do a thumbs up with me because he's got a good social presence. I don't think I could get Putin to do it. Putin would... He'd, be like, he'd look at me sternly. He'd be like... Mm. I this, feel is, like this is why I hate the West. Mm. Long-time listeners of the podcast will know that, at least I, I was going to say both of us, I don't know how you stand, but I'm a big fan of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I think he is one of the most hilarious men in the world, and uh, I find what? his politics very interesting. I think I think he's secretly a joker. I think that he would love to sign I think he'd your love map of the world. Uh, mm, probably would, actually. I probably would. Like, he could, uh, it'd be cool, because you get him to sign, like, massive Russia, right? Because massive yes. Russia's huge. So he'd sign, like, a... His, his signature would be massive because I could I'd yeah. go to Barack Obama first and I'd be like, "Can you sign America?" And I'd be like, "Russia." Uh, you, you, sh- you know what? Putin Come on, look do. at the size of um his 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 willy. Make your willy bigger <laughs> on the map. You know what Putin would probably do? What? He would just sign over Barack's signature. That'd be pretty cool, actually. Or just sign America before Barack. Uh, br- could do actually, it. that would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I am Vladimir Putin. Putin's land. <laughs> this is this Putin. land is Putin's. Pu- Put- <laughs> North Putanica. Okay. Well, as as Anthony mentioned, there are some Mongolians in this episode because it's an episode about a Mongolian cat hat. We start off the episode with our teaser as we are likely to do on Round the Twist, which gives us a little bit of a background mm. of what's going to happen in the episode. And this week we had some Mongolian monks. I'm not sure if they were legitimate Mongolians. They were some kind of Asian people. And they were carrying a Mongolian cat hat. And it looked, it looked they like Avatar. Looked like Avatar. Kind of. As Avatar. in the Navi. No, like the Airbenders. The Last Airbender. Yeah, kind of, I guess. As in the, the ones they had in the TV show or the ones in the movie. I don't know, I didn't watch either. 
Well, how know, would you know to compare to what? I've seen people go, hey, let's talk about Avatar. And then, like, you know, you see a picture of Avatar and you oh, that's, that's Avatar. I never watched the show because I don't really get it. Like, I'm really... What do you mean you don't really get it? It's not a lot to get. It's like, hey, I'm a little boy and I can bend win. Yeah, there's four elements. Yeah. And each of the tribes have people within them that are benders. Yeah. Not to be confused with slang for homosexual. That's what I was thinking. They 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 have magical powers. They can control the element and do things with it. So the airbenders can manipulate air to perform like Pokemon attacks on other people. Right? And there's one person in every generation called the Avatar. Yeah. And they are the only person in the world at one time that can control all four elements. Oh, okay. There you go. I didn't know that. Yeah. You learn new things. So it's like, so it's a bit like Naruto then, I guess. What? It's no. not at all like Naruto. They, they are. They got like um the the leaf village and sh- the fire and the sand village. Yeah, but whatever, the village that they, they come from stuff. doesn't have anything to do with the powers that they have. I thought they did. I thought it had like some no. influence. No, no, not really. It has more to do with who you are, like your ancestry and stuff about what elements you can control. You could be from the leaf village. Yeah. Right, and you could have some mastery of fire oh, okay. because of the chakra, or whatever, uh, whatever the it is, ninja yeah. abilities that you have in your in your body. Shurikens. Like that one guy from the Leaf Village, he no, had shadow I... magic. He wasn't from like the Shadow Village. Which one was that one? The guy, one of the guys. He has the shadow magic, and his friend was the had the fat abilities. Oh yeah, yeah, the fat guy who could like turn into like a um, he could roll out and like yeah. Yeah, yeah was he wasn't cool. from the Fat Village. He was from the Leaf Village. True. There you go. Learn. There you go. Naruto. And the other guy had a dog. He was from the, the Leaf Village as well. He oh, yes, right. He becomes powers. a dog or something. Yeah. Yeah, he can turn into his puppy. Or something like that. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And there you go. New things. The Mongolians put... I always get caught up on this. Mm-hmm. Look, this needs to be a recurring segment on the show, I think. Is X racist? Is yes. Is saying Mongolian, is that racist? I don't see why. That's because it's a country name, right? You're allowed to say to that people. somebody's a Mongolian. To proud people. Okay. Mongolians. Hey, man. Don't put, don't put down the Mongolians. I'm not putting them down. I just want to know. Mongolians had the largest... Actually, no, they didn't have a lot. They're the largest land empire in history. So Did they, they put, really? Yeah, land empire in history. Oh, largest, the, the largest empire in history was the British Empire. Well, they were... The Mongols... But that wasn't land. So. Obviously famous for having uh, the Khans, the Great Khans, yeah. right? And who were warlords that just roamed around well, like, like the Dothraki. Like the, um, the, the Genghis Khan like united the tribes in Mongolia and like led his horde across Asia and in yes. Europe. And one of the biggest problems with the Mongolians was, from what I heard, is that when the Khan dies, all of the tribal leaders have to go back to Mongolia oh. to get the new king. Okay. Which, is a, which is the problem, because if they were in the middle of a conflict, they were going to take over a part of Germany, I think. Yep. Um, Khan died, they had to just leave that, and of course they never expanded any further. Okay. So that was an issue, I guess. That that was their major flaw with the Khans. Also, supply lines were a little messed up. Like, when you have an empire that big, I mean... Well, they, they were mostly nomadic, right? They just, like, roamed around on their no, horses and stuff. No, no, they actually stuff. had, like, um... Did they, they have sorted, villages? They did, but also I've heard somewhere, like, um... Within Mongolian societies, like, they actually had... There were some benefits, like, um... It made trade routes a lot safer. Okay. Because, like, if everything was under the Mongolian control, like, you kind of protected all the trade routes within Mongolia. Yeah. Because you got a slice of the action, so it's like, as a trader, you know, you felt safe when you were in... Went into Mongolia, as long as, you know, you followed yes. the customs. But obviously, getting taken over by Mongolians would have been really scary. I'd but, like the viewers... Uh, the listeners, sorry. Our yeah. audience. Yes. Whoever is actually listening to this, to keep in mind that all... Of my knowledge about the Mongols in Mongolia comes from George R. Martin's <laughs> Song, Song of Ice and Fire, Fire. Yeah. and the Dothraki, which probably are not that much like the Mongolians. I've heard somewhere that as well that like 5% of all people today are related to um, Genghis Khan. What? Yeah. Did he have that many children? He raped a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> Across many countries, so like, 5%. yeah. 5%. Yeah, something like that, yeah. That is, Have that, like that's a good number. Out, shit, that's a lot of rape. <laughs> that's a lot of rape. What do you think about it? Well, so, it is. It's a lot. <laughs> he mu- Let's not get too insensitive, but you know, he must have had a system going on to be able to achieve this. Oh, he must have. Like, I don't know if he was really planning it, but I mean, he probably had like, he probably would have had first pick because he was the Khan, so he would have had first pick, he would have had the but best. But only a top, number. He would have had tons, right? Yeah. Like, and then he would have had every single woman from, from bloody uh, China through to bloody Germany and all the way down to bloody Turkey or Israel. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of ethnic diversity. You hear about these people that have concubines and harems, yeah. right? 
of hundreds of people, and you think, how how often do these people get, you know, their turn? I don't, what do you mean? Oh, oh, okay, like, um, how often does... Is it really efficient to have, like, a harem of a hundred? Are you really going to get no get through them? I don't think so. Apparently, like, it's really boring, too, like, you'd be in a harem, because you just you have to stay, nothing. In, you have to stay in the harem, yeah. And well, I imagine wait. it would probably be awful. Well, I mean, some people would... If you were in a harem. Yeah, but, like, I mean, think about this. If you had a choice between being in a harem and starving and kind of having a meh life, there would there would be benefits of being in a harem. Are you saying that you would want to be in a harem? If I had to be. I had a choice between that <laughs> and, like, fucking eating dirt, I guess. I'll be in a harem. Oh, my goodness. All right. So the Mongolians... You never said, you never said that there was a sultan, all right? So there you go. Could a what? Have, could have been a sultana. Who? Boom. What did we... What? We were talking about whether I'd want to be in a harem. You never said it was uh, for a sultan. You, do, I said a sultana. Do, do sultanas have harems? Not in this, in this scenario, they do. Okay, Obviously. so you'd be in a sultana's harem. I'm not going to be in a sultan's harem. That'd be fucking weird, wouldn't it? That'd be weird. Well... I eat dirt, maybe. <laughs> no, actually, no, I don't want to eat dirt either. The Mongolians put the Mongolian Would you eat dirt? Ha- what for? <laughs> I don't know. Would Isn't... You... Nobody actually eats dirt. If there was nothing else to eat, would you try to eat? Would you try dirt just to no. see? No. Huh? Would you? Yeah. What? Hey, there's nothing else to Why eat. Why would you do that? Hey, there's nothing else to eat. Like, give it a go. I mean, hey, it's, you're hungry. You gotta try something. No. You can't, you can't eat your own foot. Would you eat your own feet? I, I couldn't do no. that. And there you go. What would you eat? Would you starve? Well, what kind of scenario is this? Am I on an island? Am I in the jungle? Am I in a room? Locked you're starving. Up? You're starving yeah. and the only thing you can eat is dirt. Yeah, where am I though? Doesn't matter. Well, it, it does matter because okay, you're I might in a, have options. Like you're, you're, you're in a dirt area, 100 kilometers either way. It's just dirt. Just don't, and you're starving, and if you don't eat in like in a day, you're dead. Okay, I would just dig a big hole and see if I can find some worms or something. Then you what? waste more energy that way. You, you gotta eat your dirt. I'm not eat. What kind of nutritional value does dirt have? Probably tons. None. Tons. Like, I mean, what do you think plants eat? Well, that, um, nice and nitrogen enriched. Plants eat the sun. Yeah, well, they probably get like nitrogen enriched soil, and there's probably worms down there, so I mean, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that's why I would dig for worms. You, eat you don't dirt. just eat you dirt. dirt. It'll, it'll there's be no nice guarantee filler. that there's any worms there. I don't know. Or eat bark. I'll tell you, you eat bark. Yeah, you could eat bark. Bark is somewhat sensible because at least it's organic. Yeah, it's all bloody go out, go right through you, though. Yeah, but it's like it's still right? something that you could kind of eat. Uh, you could eat yourself, you know. Yeah, you could. Would you? Would I eat yourself? Would that be like, a good strategy? What, what is that know. called? Like auto cannibalism? Something like that. I've heard somewhere that that's actually bad because the trauma that you get from, like, let's say, you cut off your pinky to eat. Yeah. It. The trauma you get from doing that, like, uh, is like there's a lot of energy expelled. So yeah. So when you eat it, it's like. You, you kind of like it's counterproductive because you use more energy to like in the trauma that you'd induce in yourself yeah than it would be if you got the nutritional value out of eating your pinky what's the thing in physics or chemistry or whatever the, the laws of thermodynamics yeah I think that's it the loss of energy would be too great yeah for you to act you wouldn't be gaining anything you'd just be losing yeah pretty much that's something that's true about rabbits too you eat what? Rab- eating rabbits, it's like it, really? it, it takes more energy to digest them and like you could die. Really? Eating I don't, rabbit? I don't, know that. I don't know if that's true. No, though. surely not. I don't know. Eating rabbit? What, what is it? Explain to me the whole the whole thing about this. It's like a rabbit takes more energy to digest than it does to, uh, than the energy you get out of it. So it's like, if you, if you live just so on So it's like rabbit, celery, negative calories. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then you're like, celery is a good option. If you lived on celery, you'd die. Would you? You probably well, would. Well, celery is mostly just water. I don't understand how rabbit could be negative. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's mostly water. Maybe. Well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, there's I'm not other. A th- you look at celery. Yeah. It's see through. It's yeah. like water solidified into a plant form. You look at a rabbit. That's a, a thing. It's a little guy that jumps around. Maybe it's water. Maybe it's water solidified in uh, rabbit form. But it's not. You know, and, and, you it's know, like you're a, not a vet. I'm not a vet. There you go. If you're but a, when has that ever stopped me from commentating on well, things? It's never stopped you. That's all you have to talk about. Is- Bloody rabbits. I don't... I talk about more than just rabbits. Well, that's true. You talk about tigers sometimes. I have a good... <laughs> get it? Get I... It? <laughs> yes, you. Uh, I get... I get to this... Uh, I got a, an okay rabbit story. Yeah. So I was driving home... Well, it's not really a story. It's kind of an anecdote. Now I've talked it up too much. Nobody's yeah. going to like it. I'm, dry, I'm driving home really late one night from doing something in early in the morning... And I'm driving home and I start to see these rabbits like dancing around on the road in front of me because I was like hallucinating. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's a good, it's a good story. Keep yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Are you serious? Man, fucking hell. You need some, <laughs> you some issues, bro. You shouldn't be driving. You got pulled out by the cops. You'd be like, what about the dancing rabbits? What about the dancing it was, rabbits? It was just, well, they weren't really, da- they were just like running about. Oh, yeah. You know, just running about, and it was just kill in the, the, in the kill suburbs. Kill them all, Joe. I was nearly kill home. Them all. No, there were no voices involved. Was there a rabbit in the backseat saying, 
You must deliver the package. No, but uh, my friend Jeff the Rabbit is telling me to kill you right now. Yeah, Jeff the Rabbit. Yeah. Well, good thing You've I've insulted got... insulted his good, kind. Good thing I've got George the Turtle here. George, George the Turtle, get him! The Mongolians put a cat hat onto a barge and it floats away into the water. Then the actual episode begins. Oh, by the way, the the, the episode is called Copycat and it's yep. got some cool Chinese style lettering. Yeah, so it's, it's Chinese kind of a, style. It's like what you'd see at a um, Chinese takeaway. Yeah. Sort of is what I'd think of. Mostly. Yeah, so we start the actual episode. A horse is being ridden across a beach, and the twists are walking around on the beach. Yep. And they're talking about a Birdman competition. Now, Linda is very upset about this, and so is Fiona, who is also with them. Pete's love interest and Linda's best friend. Yeah. They're both very upset about this because it's called Birdman and not Birdwoman. What do, do you have anything to comment on this? Yeah, bloody, fem- bloody feminist. Like, like should what? we call bird women? Like, bird people I'm all right with, you know? Okay, no, no, we she's there but bird woman what the hell man huh? people get very upset about man being used to refer to human mm. where it's basically just an olden time saying when you say man you're basically just saying human like, man, like man mankind, mankind. yeah, yeah like something mankind. Like that. You said just it's just a short way of saying humankind. Yeah, it's not just referring to men; it's also referring to women. But for some reason, people get really upset about this, and I've never really understood why. I don't, I don't know because it's phallocentric. Bloody no, phallocentric, phallocentric, bloody because you could you could loving. say humankind, but yeah. are people going to be upset that? Man is also inside human. Should should humans be renamed to who men and woman? What about? But then you're offending people or who are like people? who don't who think that they're like animals or something. People that think that they're At, like they're they're like really animals. They identify as dragons like, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, like I'm not even joking. Like there are people yeah, out there I, who think that. I like, am aware. I am aware. So, you know, like okay, and then I don't know. Maybe some people like hive mind or something. Hive mind. I think they're in a hive mind. What? How do you know? Like they might have watched sci-fi and thought, hey, I'm in a hive mind. You know, and then there's other people who actually legitimately have like issues with who they are. Yes. Right? And then they're like, oh, I'm just like those people. It's like, no, you're just fucked in the head. Yeah. Sorry. Like, people... Yeah. Maybe people... you're not. I don't know. Maybe you were born in that fucking dragon. I don't know. Well, some... I don't know. I don't... There's things I don't understand about Hugh man or woman kind. Hugh man or woman kind. Just it's call them... Hugh people. Hugh people. As a proud What do you mean, Hugh people? Hugh people? <laughs> oh, very yeah. funny. There's some terrible acting in the scene. I do like this and... where um she's like, Oh, girls can't fly and then yes. um, wasn't she goes, Girls can fly. There's been a history of great pilots and that's true, but I feel like she was gonna reference Amelia Earhart and I was like yep. it's not really good. She got lost at sea. So. I thought she made it. She got lost, man. She got Did lost she at eventually sea. make it? No oh, man. She got lost at sea. Yeah, but did she eventually oh, she make it? She made it to a couple well, of there flights. There you go. Yeah, she made there it and then on the way back or something, she's she got lost at sea. So it's like look, I'm not saying that you like good pilots can't be women because they can. I don't see why they couldn't be. Yeah. Like it's not gender specific, but you don't you don't you know well maybe I should praise her for not leading with Amelia Earhart, because that's the obvious choice. Yep. So good on but you, Linda, for not it. choosing Amelia Earhart, the person who, you know, crashed a plane. It's like if I was like men get a really great race car drivers. Yeah, yeah. And then I pick a dude who's, like, renowned for crashing his car. Yes. That's his biggest achievement is that he crashed his car, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Good good on you, Linda. Yeah, good on good you. Good on you. Peter's intending on entering this Birdman competition. Birdman competition, for those of you who don't know, I should have mentioned earlier, is basically... Uh, it's a thing they do down south where they get on a big jetty and they run down the end of the pier and jump off dressed in costumes and they have apparatus to try and make them fly further. And the goal of it is to try and get as far as you can. Yes. Okay? So you're trying to be a bird man or woman. A woman. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of dumb. It's so Pete's going to enter. He's got this thing that kind of looks like a surfboard that has fins on either side. Yeah. And Fiona and Linda, yeah. I think, are both going to... Well, one of them is going to enter, and they've got a secret They've got a secret plan. They said they specifically that they're going to have a protest. Yes. They're protesting the fact that it's called Birdman, because they want it to be called... I don't... I, what is their goal here? What do they want it to be called? Birdman or woman competition? I, I never really, quite I understood. Really, they have a goal. They just want to protest. Well, yeah. This is a reoccurring theme with these two. They just like to protest things. And it's weird, because like when we go see the um, competition later... They're not the only people who protest in a similar manner. Like, yes. it's they, literally, they've just chosen a joke outfit, which is not uncommon. 
Like, if you're not doing it seriously, you go and you find a really cool joke outfit and you jump off because well, it's for charity, so... Let's, l- let's be clear here about the Birdman competition. I don't know who's taking this seriously. Yeah. Who's taking a competition called Birdman seriously? No one. There are some people. You're there, like, to, you're there to have fun. Yeah, but, like, there's some people who take it seriously, like, um, what's it called? Uh, soapbox? Soapbox races or whatever? Yes. Like, some people are like, ah, oh, this is just for fun, but other ones, like... Probably, like, try really hard to get, like, the best racer out there. And this one is like, well, you know, maybe there's, like, a pilot's son who overly helps him by building, like, a, a um, aerodynamically engineered thing out of cardboard because he knows a lot about flying a plane. Yes. Whereas Tony Twisters, we find out, knows nothing about planes. Because he's an idiot. He's an idiot, yeah. yeah. What are, one of the rules is, for those of you who don't know, it you can have any kind of apparatus you want as long as there's no kind of engine. Whatever your apparatus is has to be controlled somehow by you as a person. Yeah. So you can run and launch off, or you can kind of pedal it or do whatever you want, but it all has to be people-powered. It can't it be would, engine-powered. It couldn't be like um, a slingshot then? Uh, I don't know. I think it has to be self-contained. Yeah, because like, to me, I would assume that to be an engine, like, because like you could easily make some sort of ballista style thing. Yes. That throw that like hurls you forward. It'd be insanely dangerous, and like, uh, you probably would not be allowed today. They'd be like, no, you're not, you're not make, you're not shooting little children off a ballista into the water. Yes. Not happening. Sorry, that my insurance will not cover this. No way. Pete says you guys can't enter. Bronson says girls can't make planes. And then Linda replies with because she's so smart. She's she goes, smart. "Well, boys can't do this." And she does some cartwheels. And yeah. Bronson, the little annoying person mm-hmm. that he is, says, "Yes, I can do that." And tries to copy her in doing cartwheels and fails on his face. Falls on his face. Yeah. In failure. Thereby. Proving Linda's point, I guess. Yes. Somehow. Now, Fiona has a dog called Brutal, who yeah, likes to eat horse that? poo. Yeah, that's weird. So he does that. Mm. And then, the, the kind of set up here. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, the dog likes to eat poo. That's going to come back in the end of the episode. Yeah, it's just so weird. It's like, oh, he's eating poop. Like, yes. the dog really loves eating poop. Yes. Whatever. Horse poo especially. Sure. Whatever. Does horse poo have nutritional value? Probably. It's used as a fuel source. Is it? I've heard it is. I've heard it is. Like, I mean, I say use as a fuel source. I don't mean, like, you put it in your car. I mean, like, you use it to burn things with. Like, yes. you can stick it in, like, a um, fire. Maybe you could run your car on horse poop, you reckon? Maybe? I don't I don't know. What is the, what's in horse poo that is used as fuel? I imagine it would be, like, uh, the... the Isn't mix- it just grass? Yeah, I imagine it would be the grass, but also it would be probably, like, some leftover stuff that hasn't been digested properly. Is I it mean, like methane slash ethanol? I don't know. Probably tons of stuff in there you could use. I don't I know. I guess. I don't know. If you've, if you've ever been able to engineer a car that runs on horse poo, please tell us. The gribbles further down the beach are trying to get Rabbit to jump off a really high cliff with his glider. It's kind of a, a really, really disgustingly poorly built glider and it's really high and he jumps off and smashes into the sand. Now, this is high enough that he would probably die. Yeah, probably. But his glider thing just gets smashed. And now, the worst line of any episode of Round the Twist ever... Yes. ...is said here by Tiger. One small step for man is one giant smash for rabbit. Mm. I was not impressed. I don't know. I was pretty impressed. I was not. See, like, it was very clever. You see, let me tell you why. You ever looked, tell up, me at, why. You ever looked up at the moon, Joseph? Yes. You ever seen the moon? I have seen the moon, yes. Yeah. It looks like a rabbit, doesn't it? No. You've never seen that? No. You've never seen the moon as a rabbit? No, I've never. Let me, let me, I've got, now, my, I've got my computer up. I've got to uh, show you this, man. Moon rabbit. Why is, why is this a thing? The moon rabbit. Okay, so Anthony has loaded up the moon rabbit on his computer, and there is a Wikipedia entry called yeah. moon see, rabbit. I'm not... Crazy. The moon rabbit in folklore is a rabbit that lives on the moon based on pareidolia that identifies the markings of the moon as a rabbit. See, look, just in that picture there. Back. Yes, see? I can see it. See, there's a rabbit in the moon. There's another rabbit there. Rabbit there. So, one of fish, really. Well, yeah, well, no, it doesn't. Like, I don't know where you get that idea from. That's just insanity. Yes. <laughs> That's just crazy talk. So, yeah, there's a rabbit in the moon. What did he say again? One small crash? One uh, one small step for man is one giant smash for rabbit. Well, it looks like a crater's in the moon. There you go. All right, one small step for man on the moon, but oh, there's a big crater in the moon like shaped like a rabbit, so it's a big crash for rabbit. A big 
big there crash. You go. That's that's the joke there. Now the twists arrive, and Linda, in all her hilarious glory, says, "Looks like you guys need some more flap and less flop." <laughs> oh, Linda! Whoever wrote this episode should be rounded up and and put in, in somewhere. I don't know. Put it into a bloody um. Just just kill him. I, just kill him. Just kill him. Fucking. Well, it's not a group of people. You don't need to round him up. It's <laughs> one man. Okay, if your purpose is to round Mr. people Henderson. up and put him into like some sort of camp for um, efficient processing <laughs> or something, which is what most people are talking about when they say, let's round those people up. It's um, actually a horrible saying, isn't it? It's an it, incredibly really? horrible thing to say. So it should just be, oh, there's one guy wrote it. Well, you just kill the guy. It's more efficient than taking him to a processing center to be... Murdered later. The Gribbles respond to Linda's joking by pretending to fall on Pete's machine, and they basically just stomp on it and smash it. No, sorry, they um, they're oh, ass- they're being I'm assholes. I'm very tired. Oh, I'm falling, and they break his. In machine. any other in any other story, these guys would be like, it would be painted as like just really mean bullies, and like um, people would be like, why I are they? they that's just, what just, they were in this. Yeah, but like it was just like, oh, whoops, whoops. You know, it was like a. If they were assholes. They were just being assholes. No offense. Just an asshole. Why would that be offensive to call an asshole an asshole? I don't know. Assholes may not like being called assholes. I don't know. Maybe all a, maybe the assholes out there. All the assholes let like, us know if you find d- a term how offensive. Dare you? How dare you? How dare you? That's our term. That's our term. That's you our know? term. You can't call other people assholes. Pete That's swears. The appropriation of our culture. Pete swears revenge, and he wants to beat them in the competition to get revenge on the Gribbles. Mm-hmm. Bronson sees the magic hat in its container and says, oh, look, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, and goes to get the magic hat. And they open it up, and the first thing that Pete says is, it looks like some kind of hat. Thanks, yeah, mate. Good on you, Pete. Good, well observed. You know how to, you know, you, you know your hats. They take the hat, Bronson puts it on, the magic Mongolian f- cat hat, and says, it's mine, you don't get to use it. Linda says, I don't care, and then she does cartwheels, because plot. Reasons. And like, yeah. Bronson watches and the cat opens its eyes. Yeah. And then Bronson is able to magically copy her. Exactly. Yep. Because form the cat hat is actually magic. Yep. And it can copy anything. That's why the episode is called Copycat. Copy Get it? Copycat, yep. And, uh, it's called a, and it's a cat hat. Yes. Mm. Bronson gives the hat... Well, he said, this is mine and no one else can have it, right? Yes. And then they discuss, oh, it was very lucky that you could be able to do what Linda did. And then Bronson immediately says, oh, okay, Pete can have it for luck, so it can win the race. Even though... I just, just spent- said, I just said, this is mine and nobody else can have it. So he gives it to Pete and then he burps and then the cat opens its eyes and gets Pete to copy him to burp as well. And then Bronson and then- notices the eyes open. Yeah, Bronson o- notices the eyes open and takes the hat back. Yeah. Just- what the hell? What, what is-, is wrong with you? What is going on here? I don't understand. This is my hat, okay? My hat, nobody else says I'm a selfish Bronson. We know how selfish Bronson is. He loves food. He loves food, right? Then we see Pete... He's, he's like, oh, Pete, you can have the hat. And then, oh, man, what's this? It copies. Now I want it back. What is wrong with you, Bronson? You've gone from useless to indecisive. At least when you were useless, you weren't causing any damage. Exactly. Yeah. The Twist Kids get back to the lighthouse, and Tony is dancing around in celebration because Faye, his love interest, has apparently just said yes to marry him. But I thought he said yes last time. We were like, And, and Joe's like, Joe, we're watching this, and Joe's like, but I thought he said it, and I'm just like, just go with it. It's a but, but, I'm like, just go with it. Just, I just like, just go with it. So you have to go with it too, guys. Just, just go with it. Those I mean, of no. you that are not in the know and have no idea what we're talking about, at the end of season one, Tony and Faye basically propose to each other. Yeah, and so basically they say yes to each other. Like, if you propose to one another, all right, then technically you're saying yes because you both want the same interest. I'm sorry, but like, the conversation would be like, do you want to? And then she'd be like, get married? Well, you both say yes at that point. So that's been retconned, and now we can imagine that Tony has just proposed here. It could have just been like, this season could have opened, right? Just yeah. easily opened with, you know, uh, even see episode two, getting ready for their wedding, right? Yes. Just been like, um, Nell or something. Maybe they were putting up, maybe they're going to have a wedding at the lighthouse or something. So maybe they were just putting up some decorations over the top. What do you reckon? This is where they're going to go. It would have been very easy to piece together as a child. Oh, oh, they're getting married. You don't yes. even need, if you were in new to the show, you don't even need to know that, like, they were not getting married beforehand. I mean, I guess maybe because Bronson's supposed to resent 
face. So you're supposed to be reminded that, oh, by the way, this is not Bronson's mother. So then maybe that's what it is. But it's like, you didn't even need that plot anyway. Yeah, so Bronson is not pleased that they're getting married. And she sa- he says, she's not sleeping in my room and I'm definitely not calling her mum. And Tony says, you can call her Faye. What's your hat? And Nell says, that's a Mongolian cat hat. Good on because n- she knows she everything. She knows everything because she's in a coma. We've been over this. But still, seriously, what the hell? She goes, you need to be careful because those cat hats, they can be unpredictable. Yeah, they can. Peter is unhappy that Gribble has smashed his plane and Bronson says, we're going over there right now to bash him up. You want to come with us, Dad? And Dad says, no, because I've got a wedding to prepare for that's in six weeks. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Whatever. That's a long... That's weird, but whatever, sure. We yeah, cut to writing. what I assume is the next day, yeah. and the Twist kids are getting on the bus, uh, but Bronson has no money. And instead of his siblings giving him money, he just kind of stands there. Yep. And the bus driver says, Come on, come on, I haven't got all day, in some kind of accent. And Bronson, yep. because he's wearing a cat hat, yep. copies. And, and replies to And then, of course, he, they get the bus driver, the is bus. offended because... Well, I would be too. Be like, oh, you now you're mocking me and you're not giving me money. You're so. mocking his accent. Yep. Well, there Generally, you go. Generally, just not a very nice thing to do. Yeah, not very nice. Linda takes a hat off Bronson and yep. the kids are walking down the road and they see Mr. Gribble and Matron who are hanging up signs to yes. promote his progressive conservative party run for Senate. Yes. It is definitely Senate. I don't understand why it's not mayor. I don't know either. Makes more sense to be mayor. Matron says to... This scene is really dumb. Hey, because- the scene was good though because like when we were always... We were, we were wondering if her name was Matron like or that was her job yes. title. For the longest time. But then Pete goes and um, talks to... It's what's really weird actually. Yeah. Actually, that's really weird that Pete refers to Matron and... Um, Mr. Gribble. Mr. Gribble. That actually makes me wonder now as well because um, children normally do not refer to adults by their first name. Yes. That's like... The height of rudeness. Um, so now I'm even more confused. Why wasn't she referred to as Mrs. Gribble? Just Matron. Like, whatever. Uh, you know what? Whatever. But it, her name is Matron, and we pretty much confirm that now. It's not just her job title. Yeah. It'd be even weirder going, Oh, hi, Matron. You're not at work, so I'm going to refer to you as Matron anyway. It'd be like referring to a police... Uh, oh, no, actually, you do refer to police sergeants as that, eh? I don't know. What are you talking about? Like, talking about? like okay, so like if you were talking to a police officer, let's say his name is Sergeant Theodore or something, or S- Sergeant Ted, we'll call him that. Okay. Right? While he's on duty, you'd say, uh, No, it's all right, Sergeant Ted. No, now, but you it would saw be him Sergeant off Judy. It would be Sergeant whatever his last name is. Yeah, his last name's Ted in this one. Okay. No, you, that's confusing. Okay, we'll call him Sergeant Johnson. Okay. Sergeant Sergeant Johnson, right? Um. So we got the Sergeant Johnson here. Okay. Stop doing the thing with your mouth. It's driving me crazy. What? It's going to take me forever to edit out. You keep going. You <sighs> stop. No. Stop it. Stop doing it. It's going to take me forever to edit it out. Stop doing it. Stop. Stop. So. Yes. Continue. Stop it. <laughs> ah. Okay. Keep going. So you refer to someone like um, what was his same Sergeant Johnson. Yes. All right. When he's on duty, you'd refer to him as Sergeant or Sergeant Johnson. But even when he's off duty, you would refer to him as generally Sergeant Johnson because that's sort of his sort of works for him. It's the same thing goes for um uh if you're in the army, like if you're a uh, sergeant in the army, or if you were a, a uh, not a general, general's too high, you'd never meet a real general um, on the street, just who the hell would know that? So maybe, um, Major? Yeah, Major. Major Johnson. Oh, hi, Major Johnson. Is, uh, An- is Anthony at home? And he's wearing, like, just regular raggy-daggy clothes, because he's, uh, he's on leave. You wouldn't call him as, hi, Mr. Johnson, you know, he's because he, he's the Major, of course. So maybe Matron, we don't know her name still. That's maybe. what I'm trying to get at, you know? Or maybe they're just like, screw it, her name's Matron, and we have disobedient children who, yes. you know, refer to the adults by their first name. Who knows? Basically, the only point of this scene is that Matron says to her husband, Oh, I love you, dear. Or what What did she say? You look lovely today, dear, in front of the children. And then Linda, because she's wearing the hat, copies. Mm-hmm. And especially she goes, Oh, you look lovely, dear. Touches Mr. Gribble on the bum. And then Linda does the exact same thing. It's weird. It's very, very, very weird. Yes, it is. And I don't, I don't really like it. It's, what it's, what it's, don't you it's like? It's incredibly disturbing, isn't it? Well, it that's the that was the sole point of the scene. Yeah, I guess so. So later at home, Tony is quite happy that he's marrying Faye and mm. is modelling her with a sculpture. He's sculpting it's her, model, and she's she's like a Greek. She's dressed as like a Greek goddess, holding some fruit and stuff in his living room. Yeah, and Faye has decided that she wants to go to Bali for their honeymoon. 
Yes. Now the ghosts appear for no reason. Two ghosts appear in the stairway. We There's, saw them last week. They don't say anything. They just... well, they make like one comment, but I didn't write it down because it was naff. Yeah. Tony then takes the hat hat from whoever has it. Yep. And says, "Oh, but Bali will be great. The children are gonna love it. We can dance around. We can wear exotic hats. We can do crazy things." Faye's not impressed that Tony wants the children to come on the honeymoon. Yeah, I and agree. then Tony, it's a, bit, it's a bit, bit, that's a little messed up. Tony sees the dog eating dog food. Mm. Brutal again, bloody brutal. Bloody brutal. And then puts his hat on. No, he's got the, the hat, hat on. Opens its eyes, right? Yeah. Sees the dog eating dog food. Then he does it as well. Now the ghosts laugh and disappear. Yeah. It's just not. It doesn't make any it sense. Just but, doesn't hey, measure up. I know, I know, it doesn't. But like, hey, so basically, Tony Twist wants to take kids on the honeymoon. It's a little weird. I mean, yeah. Would like, you take if you had kids? No. Well, if you did. No. If you had, well, if you did. Yeah. And you got married again. No. But if you did, this is a hypothetical. Yeah, I know. I'm saying no. I'm like, I wouldn't take my Would kids you? with me. Oh. Uh, like, Nell. What if you loved your kids? Yeah. Screw it. You what if your them. new potential wife yeah. had kids and wanted to bring them on the honeymoon? I'd be like, a little bit weirded out. Be like, why? Really? All right. Whatever. But I wouldn't want to bring my kids. Besides, Nell's there. Seriously. <laughs> Nell is useless. Nell could not look after kids. Honestly, Tony can't look after his own children anyway. So... <laughs> Nell is, Nell is pretty much the same thing. It doesn't even matter because, like, they're not going to go on a honeymoon because, let's face it, uh, it's all in her, Nell's dreams anyway, so they can't leave. Yes. Otherwise, Nell's by herself and she realizes she's in a dream world. Okay. So, there you go. Yeah. Good, good rationing there. Yeah, that's the, all the, all the, all the stuff that doesn't make sense in the show is all because of Nell's coma. Pete is fixing his plane with paper. Yes, newspaper. Newspaper. I don't know how effective that will be. My paper mache. I guess. I guess. Bronson apparently has smelly feet. The dog doesn't like his. And he likes to smell his he own, likes to feet. Smell his own I feet. I don't like. I'm like, wow. I wrote Some down. Kind of... I wrote down. Bronson has a foot fetish because well, there he, you go. He clearly does have a foot fetish because he smells his own feet, and it's like, oh, I love that smell. I don't. Know, I don't know what's wrong with you. What, what's up? What's wrong with you? Tony comes in and he's basically an aeronautical engineer and starts talking about negative pressure and upward <laughs> lift. That's how that's how planes fly in the sky. Negative they, pressure. I don't know if they do. They finish fixing Pete's apparatus. They take it up on the roof. They go to test it out by throwing it off the top of a very tall lighthouse. I don't know what they were expecting to happen here. They throw it off and it crashes onto the ground and just breaks into a million pieces. Yeah. And Pete gets very upset. Bronson is also upset because they can't beat Gribble anymore. And he says, at least we still have Linda's plane. Uh Counting on Linda. Surprise. That's your first mistake, mate. Especially season two, Linda. That'd be like counting on Bronson. Season one, Linda, would be okay to count on. She she, she she would have a plane. She could stand up for herself. That, that, That Linda, you know, she didn't have to go around telling people, hey, I'm a tough feminist. This she, she just sort of was a tough feminist. This Linda's like, hey, I need to interject uh, my feminism because I need you to remind you that I'm a feminist. That's my defining character trait. That is exactly right. Like, this one has no depth other than I'm a feminist. Which this is like, mm, okay, cool. This Linda reveals her plane and it's a bird costume. It's basically a pink chicken. No, it, it was a, it was a galah. Is it? Yeah, it's supposed to be a galah, man. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The joke is that it's a woman in a bird costume because it's bird man. It's the bird. Mm. She's being a bird woman, right? That's the, that's the joke. That's what she was trying to do here. That's a shitty joke. This was their protest. That was a shitty protest, my friend. Yes. Just terrible. You can't even tell it's a woman in the suit. Pete and Bronson are really mad that they think that Gribble is going to win now. Yeah. So they they get mad, and then Linda hears a plane go past, and she's a plane. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She's like, oh, she I got an idea, which is very Ooh. clever, I, which is kind of clever, although not when you think about, like, what happens to most people. Like, they, they... Okay, so if you can already piece the pieces together, you already know what's going to happen. It's like she's going to put on the hat, <laughs> and she's going to look at the plane, because the plane has got, like, a um, vote for James Gribble yes. uh, as the senator. You know, so she's got she's gonna do that. But if you remember, you copy everything the plane does. So you would fly up to where the plane is. Now there's not one, there's not that there would be air up there, okay, it's fine. It would get a little cold, but more importantly It's not going into the atmosphere. The, more importantly the upper More importantly, the plane doesn't fall. Okay? Now How are you gonna get down? Well, remember at all the other times, Tony, when he ate the dog food, okay. Yes. After a little while, he realized he was eating dog food and stopped, okay? You think she would fall? She'd fall to her death. Without a doubt, fall to her death. Okay. 
There's no way. She'd be up super high and then she'd be like, oh no, I can't fly anymore. Yeah, bang, into the water, which of course we all know. If you fall really high into water, you're going to die because it's like hitting concrete. Because gravity. Yeah, whatever. Because of negative, you know, according to Tony Twist. Upward lift. Upward lift and negative pressure, according to Mr. Twist. So, yeah, moral of the story is don't try to be a plane. <laughs> That's a good takeaway message. Don't be a plane. Because plane, being a plane will get you killed. Don't be a plane. Yep, I could have they, told you that. They get to the competition. Gribble opens it up on behalf of the Progressive Conservative Party. He goes, let's begin the Birdman competition. Yeah, let's begin that Birdman comp. Fiona is objecting to the Birdman mention and says Bird Woman. Yes. Come on, just, you know, get past it. Yeah, or just be like Bird Person or... There's all th- There's things that we don't like in yeah. life. That we all don't don't like. like. We have to get past them, though. What I don't like is that your outfit is not any way reflects that you're a woman in any way. It's just, I'm a galah, and you're like, oh, I'm a bird woman. It's kind of... Why don't you call yourself, like, a a play on words or the term of galah or something that you can incorporate, like, a woman or something into? So, like, I don't know. You know what I find the, um, the, the... the f- the feminine galar or something, some other something else, or a cockatoo. Maybe there's something there. So maybe it's like a phallic um, joke. No cock or two or something. Uh, like, I don't know. A joke there. There you go. Something else other than just I'm a bird woman. You know what I find interesting? Yeah. That they have chosen a pink bird, yeah. whereas most feminists are in objection to pink being used as a female color. A female color. Well, yeah, I agree, actually. Why don't they be a magpie? Magpie would make more sense. Yeah, but then the joke's not there. Why? Because it's just a bird. Yeah, I guess what well, the thing is, a, a, a galah's not there either. It's a bird as well, man. But the problem is, it's not even unique. There were like three other people at this There were three other people like, who did not take this costumes. seriously. There was one guy who was dressed, had like an UFO or something, which is like, okay, well, so yeah, but. That's fine to not take it seriously, but to wear the the joke, the bird man thing had already been done. There was a guy wearing a chicken suit riding a bicycle. There you go. It's See, so then what are you protesting? Yeah, exactly. Should be what you should have had is you should have made your wing glider out of protest signs. <laughs> Okay, that's what you should have done. Tiger is announcing the competition. People power only is the rules. Yes. Bessie goes first. Call back to season one, Spaghetti Union competition. One yes. of our favorite episodes. She is got a machine that is powered by brain power, apparently. She just falls flat on her face in the water. The yeah. next guy to go up is Paul the Asian man. Wildly yep. racist. Pick on the smart Asian kid. It's the smart Asian much. guy who is telling us all about his special ability to aerodynamically fly. And then basically and Rabbit just pushes him in the water. Tiger. Tiger Rabbit's pushes the dumb him. One. So Tiger just pushes him in the water. So Yep, Tiger just pushes him in the water. Rabbit comes up next and he's got a wooden plane and he goes, uh, are you how do you know that you're going to be good at this one, Rabbit? And he goes, It's red. He goes in <laughs> in the water. Yep. Tiger gives him eight out of ten, apparently. Of does. Bumblebee man goes in. There's a UFO wearing costume. Yeah, man. I don't know what that, that uh, one there's is. a guy wearing a chicken suit on a bike as we discussed. Then now it's James Gribble yep. on an actual hang glider. <laughs> on an actual enormous hang glider. That's a misappropriation of funding if I ever saw it. Yes. Where all the government funding for <laughs> Yeah, it's like oh we we're, we're a Senate party, um I would love some access to some of those government grants. Okay, sure. And then it's like you see this receipt of like for it and it's like regular normal political stuff and then it's like ten thousand dollars on a hang glider for my son for my son for political reasons as progressive conservatives he jumps eh? off and he goes really really far and tiger gives him 40 four zero forty yeah well, he didn't go I very far i didn't i didn't really understand the scoring system here is this an out of 10 or is this how many meters like what's the go <sighs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I never really understood the scoring system either. It didn't make any sense to me. There's one more person to go. And it's Linda. It's Linda. Mm. She puts on the magic hat, the magic cat hat from Mongolia, and looks at the plane as it's flying up in the air. It doesn't work. Mm. And Rabbit says from the crowd, Oh, what a, what a chicken! Because <laughs> she's wearing a bird, bird. Yeah. costume. We get yes, it. Yes, you finished yawning. Yep. Yes, excellent. What a turkey. Could have been like that. What a that. galah. What a, what a galah. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it would have made more sense too, right? Because it's what it is. Tiger gives her 10 more seconds or she's disqualified. So they count down from 10. The crowd, 10, 9, yep. 8. They get to zero and she's still staying there, but she's not disqualified. She gets about another 10 seconds. Yeah. They awesome. must have been trying to fill time here. Yep. And she sees a bird, last minute, a seagull, and then copies it. And yep. it flies around in the sky. She for sees ages. a bird and it's just like, wow, I'm flying like a bird. Wow. Did you ever go to Movie World when you were a kid? 
Yes. Did you ever pay $15 to get a VHS of you pretending to be Superman on the blue screen? Ah, uh, no. But I know some other people probably did. Yes. I was not one of those people. I was not one of those people, but my cousins did. And it is the worst blue screen that I've ever seen in my world. In, in the world. It is terrible. Is that it's today? disgusting. Is that, oh, no, no. This is the, this is the video. Yeah. That blue screen was better than the blue screen in this episode. That's pretty Of shady. Linda flying through the air. Yeah. I think it was green screen, this one. No, it's you could blue. See, but you could, dude, you could see the green. You could see the patches of green around her, like. Really? Yeah, you could see parts of green where, like, um, they didn't really, it didn't really blend properly. It was like, hmm, yeah, that's, um, hmm, good work in, uh, what's it? I don't even know what they were using. Post production. What, 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 it, they, I don't know. This is the 90s. I don't know what equipment they were using. Fair enough. But yeah, so that was kind it's of shitty. It looked, it, looked, it looked really weird. It looked bad. And uh, she flew around like a bird and no one For questioned five it. Minutes. Like, hey, uh, it's performance enhancing drugs. I'm not even joking. This was the longest sequence of the episode. Her just flying around and just kept cutting back to people in the crowd looking shocked and amused. Shocked at a woman flying? That's five, what That's what, that's what um, Linda would have been thinking. Yeah, that's right. A woman flying, not... Whereas yeah. everyone else would have been like, oh my God. Is a person actually flying? What? What is she on? What is she taking? Does she have a propeller? People would want to know these things. Like, how is she up there? Call the government. Call the government. Like, we don't need fighter jets if our troops can just bloody, you know, go in, like, with guns and stuff, flying and attacking, like, terrorists. Well, she lands back on the pier, and I'm not really, look, I'm not really sure of the rules of this competition, because there wasn't, there weren't uh, any. yeah, it's how far you go. Yeah, how far you go, and it's like, um, I'm, I'm gonna say it's long distance rules. Not long distance rules, um... Long jump rules. Ah. So it's like, it's not where you, you fall, it's where you first land. That's ah. exactly and it. she lands on the dock. She on lands the on the dock, so technically she loses. Because she didn't fly yeah, that I far. Yeah, I thought that too. So technically, even though she had an amazing flight, by all technicality, she, Gribble should win. But everyone's like, oh, you know, she wins because she clearly could fly. And I'm like, yes, but she... The rules state you have to fly further. Well, we don't uh, actually know... They kind of went through the rules quite quickly. Yeah, uh, fair enough. It may, like, if it was something like, who can stay up in the air the longest, I guess. But then you would have been having people making helicopters and not flying machines. Now, Gribble immediately knows that it was the cat hat that did it, because magic, I guess. And he says, it's the cat thing, let me prove it. And he steals the cat hat, puts it on. Now the dog, conveniently, escapes to and run over And sees another an horse. Those convenient horses it's on, on the, the beach. beach. just there. Hey, look, there's the, another horse. And it's never seen a horse a before in any of the other episodes, but twice I, you in You know what episode. else? I never actually really see a horse that much in my life, even if I go to the beach. There's horses around here. Oh, uh, yeah. The, I know, there's, there's, the, I've seen those horses, but I'm not saying like... Yeah, they, you see them riding There's a guy who has a paddock or something, right? But you don't see it that often. It's not like... It would be rare to see a, it would be rare to see a horse on a main road in up here in, a week thing. in my street. People walk down it on the horses all the time. Well, maybe that's there's a just race. You. There's like a ra- race track, like 300 meters from here. Where that's why they call it a race right field. Now. Yes. Whoops. Yeah. Let's cut now that out. people, people, Let's cut that no, out. it's not cut it out. Let's just people leave it can stalk us. At least yeah. we'll know that we'll have listeners then. If yeah. Okay. We'll us. leave it in there. Um, we live at, uh, we live in... Stone said... <laughs> no. <laughs> Come find us. No. My IP address is 192168551. No. Is that right? I, the, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't remember whatever the um, generic IP address is. I don't know. Find me, fool. Then, because he's wearing the hat, the, the eyes open and he has to go and eat the poo. Yes. Then, the episode ends. Yep. There you go. That joke was set up long ago, so that's why he was eating the poop. Yep. Mmm, good yummy, work, yummy Mr. Poop. Henderson. Mmm, good work, Mr. Henderson. Let's blame all bad episodes. Let's blame this entire season on Mr. Henderson. Yep. Mm-hmm. That is my plan, and I'm going to stick to it. This was better than last week's. Yeah, a little bit. But, like... Did you have any... Before we give it a rating... Yes. What, how do you feel about it? What? what anything else you want to add? No. Anything maybe. else you want to talk about? No, no, no. I can't think of anything else okay. to talk about. Like, how many uh, bowls of spaghetti yeah. would you give it then? I would Out give ten. it four. Yeah, I think I would give it three and a half bowls of uncooked spaghetti. I'd, I'd give it four bowls of cooked spaghetti because I mean it was it was very succinct too. It it all flowed like yes. a lot of round twist episodes. Sometimes they don't flow at all. Like it doesn't make any sense. Birds this day. one. Yeah, both is a good example. This one, at least, it all did flow. All yeah. the things tied up nicely. There were no loose ends where we were like, what the what the hell? It was just, yes. It all happened. the things did tend to work. It's definitely it just, better than last week's. It was just not very good. If it keeps getting better, we'll be sitting on 10 out of 10 by the end of the season. I so. hope so. Let's, let's I hope. hope so. I mean, next week is a good episode. Yes, next week is an iconic episode. A little squirt. Where Bronson has a peeing competition and pees really far for some reason. Pee's really far, inspiring young boys in primary school to P 
pee up the side of a urinal. Which everyone did. Everyone did. In primary school. And every janitor was like, Damn you, I, Paul Jennings. I hate round the twist because there would just be pee stains probably all up on the brick wall. You know? People trying to pee over the wall. Exactly. And then there's always this rumour that someone peed over the wall and peed into a teacher's coffee. Yeah, right? like that, in always that twist. Re- yeah, but it never really happened. No. Never happened. No. Never got good. What did you have for lunch today? No, I haven't had lunch yet, but I don't know. Maybe a sausage. I've got leftover sausages in the fridge. I should probably eat. One of the things we like to talk about every week is lunch. Is lunch. We lunch do love our lunch here what did you have on Tales for? from the Twists. Lunch or morning tea or well, breakfast? Well, I had a sausage roll for mm. a late breakfast. Late breakfast? Oh, I guess roll. it was a kind of a, well, a little it's bit more late. more like a lunch. Whatever, it's it all good. It was a little lunch. It was like a nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is still breakfast realm. Yeah, it depends really when you wake up too, though. Like, Maybe. Uh, like, if you work night shift, then I, I would love to know what lunch is to you. Like, that's that'd be a little weird. Like, if, Or if you worked even morning... The like concreters are a good example. They work, they get up really early in the morning and they finish work at about 12 because the concrete just has to set. So there's no point in them staying around. So a lot of concreters, they'll finish work at 12. They'll then they'll go and have a sleep. So it's like their dinner is like at about 3 or PM or something or 2 PM. So their lunch is actually 10 or I think, 9 AM. I think you would just be having like breakfast and two lunches. Be really weird. Or maybe a couple of breakfasts. I don't know. If you're a concreter. I know I would just have multiple breakfasts. Yeah. You'd see nothing you can get breakfast. away with it. Well, I think you'd get sick of it because I hate. I really. I, I'm not a big fan of breakfast cereal. I don't like breakfast cereal. But I like breakfast food. Like yeah, breakfast the hot, food hot is hot fun. Breakfast food. Is I think food. you'd get over it pretty quick, though. I yeah, think probably. you'd be sick of eggs. Eggs. I think you could get sick of pretty quickly. And yeah. bacon. Eggs and bacon. Like yeah, but like if you mix it up a bit with some. Have pan you ever pan. had fake bacon? Mm. Like bacon. Bacon yuck. It's actually not bad. Mm. It's actually all right. Yeah, you, know, you know they're actually engineering bacon in labs now. Really? Yeah, apparently. Like, so you um, don't have to kill pigs anymore. Well, like, yeah, apparently, like, the cost to produce it has gone down from two hundred fifty thousand dollars <laughs> per pound down to eighty dollars per pound. Uh, so it's actually like, oh, okay, it's actually reasonable. It's going to get better and better. So it's like, would I eat that stuff? Well, if it tastes like regular bacon, I guess. I'll eat Is it. it good for you though? Because it could give you cancer. Well, yeah, probably would give you cancer. But then again, like, bacon gives you a heart attack. So like, choose your poison. Yeah, whatever, man. I don't care. The, which way do you want to die? Which would you rather? Yeah. Cancer or a uh, heart disease and heart attacks? Which would you rather heart die attack. from? Heart attack. Heart attack. Probably. Heart attack all the way. Cancer, you have to, is a struggle. Like, we're talking like, like, I'm on a golf course. At least you I'm, know. I'm on the golf course or something. And I'm like, and I do it and I'm like, <gasps> and I grab my chest or something. And yes. then, like, we've got my old friends. They're like, oh, it's Anthony. He's, he's, he's having, having a heart, heart attack. attack. And then I don't get revived. Like, that was done really quickly. It was cancer. Is it's like you get the test yeah, results, at least, and then it's a slow, gradual process. At least process. you can come to terms with it, and you can like say goodbye to everyone you need to. Yeah, and... but sort of waste away when you have cancer. Yeah, but really it, by by the time that by by hopefully by the time that we would be at cancer receiving age, We're right? At cancer receiving we, age now. Euthanasia would be illegal. A, a little, would be illegal. legal. So you could get you could get far enough in and be like, all right, I've had enough. Yeah, but if I have a heart attack, like I don't have to worry about that stuff. It's boom, done, and then I'm just it's too sudden. Care. You don't have time to prepare. You don't need a time to prepare. I need time to prepare. No, you, you need time to prepare. I don't need time to prepare. It's just like, boom, done. Okay, I'm done. Drop the mic. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Yep. Don't what, uh, what is, what is, which way would you prefer to die? Out of any way that you could die, what would be your favorite? My favorite? You don't want to ask that question to me. What? <laughs> well, how would you die? How would I die? The best way to die is you, t- like, obviously, I don't know, like, if I was sadistic, it would take as many people out as you could with you. Well, th- this got dark But, very like, quickly. I'm not gonna do that. Like, that's the best way to die if you're sadistic. Um, I don't know. Getting hit over the head with a baseball bat? I don't know. I don't really think about the best ways to die. I just think about ways to avoid dying. It's kind of a thing I do. It's like called living. You it's know? called living. Yeah, Strategies I try not to- for life. Strategies for life. Don't get hit with a baseball bat. Yes. Uh, don't walk out don't in front of buses. Breathe underwater. Don't walk out in front of buses. Don't shoot yourself. Or don't get shot. Like, it's hard, I know. Getting shot is harder it's than... It's a hard skill. It's a hard skill to avoid a bullet, but if you can do it, that's probably a good way to stay alive. Just, you know. Although I've heard that if you shoot yourself with lower caliber bullets, you can build up immunity to higher caliber rounds. <laughs> what? <laughs> some, what? I don't know. Some picture on the internet. It's just like, um, shoot yourself in the lake with low caliber bullets to build up immunity to higher caliber bullets. <laughs> it's like... Mm, I don't think anyone's yeah, going to believe that. That, that, that could work. <laughs> Please, if you're listening... Don't do that. Do, do not try that. I don't want to be irresponsible That's for what right. happens. And that, that I think, is all we I have time for. Yeah. On... <laughs> and he's like, this needs to end This now. is over. <laughs> we need to finish this before uh, we get a, a lawsuit or something. My name is Joseph Lewis. And I'm Anthony Bull. 
Thank you for listening to Tales from the Twist. If you're interested in following us on social media, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube. And Twitter. Uh, Facebook and YouTube where Tales from the Twists. And the TFT and Twists. At TFT Twists on and Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I'll be on the Instagram. We'll, we'll get on the Instagram eventually. I would like to post pictures. Oh, well, then you start it up. I don't know how. Well, there you go. And also, we're on, we're on iTunes, Tales from the Twist. Subscribe to us on iTunes and I will give you a free puppy. No, he won't, but you can get the episode a day early. Well, yes, but you might get a free puppy. No, you won't. Well, you might. I may not give it to you, but a puppy may occur in, in your round. No, you won't, but we, we may. I'll kidnap your puppy if you don't do we it. We may be running another competition in the near future, so oh. you might want to subscribe. You might want to subscribe. That's true. Anyway, thank you very much for listening, and stay that's all we have time for. That's my line. Yeah, well, stay this is my line. Stay, stay twisty. Stay, stay, stay no, with no, the no, 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 twisties. Stop, stop talking. I had to edit you out saying that last week, so I could, I could be the one to say it. Stay twisty. No, no. Stay twisty. Stay twisty. Stay twisty. Stop. Stay twisty. Stay twisty. Stay twisty.